biggest goal is to try to make unique content. Obviously, three blue, one brown is best. If you can't do something smart, do something stupid. I got my black belt a while. I don't ask me for study tips. <laughs> Why the name Mu Prime Math? Why do you like math? I think your videos are really professional. Your presentation skill and then the way you explain it, I love it. I got my my shirt on today. Yay! Yeah. First of all, my name is Hayden, so I'm going to be a senior in high school next year, and I plan to major in math in college after that. Yeah. The main things I do on my channel, I have like random math problem stuff, which is like the limit question that, that he was talking about, so like limits, integrals, and whatever sort of calculus things. And then I also have more in-depth like series videos. So I did a linear algebra series already, and then I'm also working on a differential equation series right now. You can recognize my videos from the fact that at the start of every video, I walk in from out of frame and say, so we are going to. Yeah, actually, I love that. I grow into your intros. I just cut right to the chase. I love that. All right, so first question for you. Why the name Mu Prime Math? Uh, my last initial is M. Uh -huh. So I chose, I chose Mu because the Greek letter Mu, like the uppercase Mu, looks like the capital M. Yeah. And then it also like mu makes the M sound in Greek. So mm -hmm. I was originally going to call it Ada Mu because then it would be HM because Ada is sort of like the Greek H. But then I realized that that just sounds like a fraternity, so that's not great. So I did mu prime instead because it's more memorable. I see, I see. What made you create your channel? Yeah, so the, the reason I made my channel is because I really like explaining things and seeing when people un finally understand them. Mm -hmm. So like even before I had my channel when I was, in, when I was taking calculus, a couple years ago, people would ask me for help a lot of times because I was pretty advanced. Mm -hmm. And have like having the opportunity to explain things to people and then seeing when they finally actually understand what's going on, I think is really cool. But then also, I think this is from Richard Feynman. He said once, like one of the best ways to fully understand something or to make sure you can understand it is to try to explain it to someone else in like simple language. So I think my channel is cool because I help to I help other people learn these math ideas and then I also make myself understand them better. Yeah. So I think that's really cool. Yeah, that's great. That's really wonderful. Who are your ideal audience? For like the challenge problem videos and those sort of things, I think anyone who's taken calculus one and two, so if you know how to do derivatives and integrals, I think anyone at that level of math would be a good fit for those videos. So like the limit video in the description, a lot of my integral problems are sort of that level. So if you've taken those classes or if you're more advanced, I think then you can watch those videos. For the like specific series, the topics sort of vary in difficulty, mm -hmm. so there'll be different levels of math for each one. So every series I have episode zero, there's like an intro at the start, and in that video I'll talk about the series, and then I also explain like what sort of background knowledge you need in order to understand it. Mm -hmm. So the differential equation series I'm doing right now, if you start from the beginning, you just need to know calculus, mm -hmm. but then for like linear algebra, then you have to know sort of different things to get into it and then still be able to follow what's going on. So as long as you have that base knowledge that I talk about in each intro, then you can follow along with what I'm doing. Nice. Yeah. And what's your goal for your channel though? So my biggest goal is to try to make unique content. So what that means is I want to do problems that other people haven't done on YouTube before or explain ideas in sort of new ways. Yeah. So one of the reasons I actually decided to start a YouTube channel is because I was learning about Laplace transforms in my differential equations class a year ago. And I was trying to figure out like why it works, like who who came up with the idea of, oh yeah, let's take this differential equation, uh, multiply it by e to the negative st oh, and yeah. take the integral. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. what's going on? Why does this work? So yeah. I tried to figure that out online, but I couldn't really find any explanations that like really made me understand what was going on. So I'm actually going to make a video on Laplace transforms next month so you can subscribe so you can see it. But I'm trying to make those sort of videos where I explain, I'm able to explain things that I wasn't find, able to find explanations for online. So I can sort of add to that ability of people to understand these things. Why do you like math? I think that understanding advanced math concepts is really satisfying. Mm -hmm. So I'll totally I agree with you the, on that. Yeah, the first time this really hit me was um, in my, I was taking AP Calculus AB mm -hmm. and we were learning about the fundamental theorem of calculus and the idea that the area under a curve is somehow related to the slope of yeah. a different graph. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are like, oh, it's just so cool, but I want to know like why it's true. And I think the, the most awesome thing about math is when you figure out like why that relationship exists. So I like I watched some of uh, Three Blue One Brown's videos on calculus, like he's done some stuff on integrals and slopes. And once I finally figured out like why that was true and I had sort of a, like an intuitive understanding of that, mm -hmm. that's like 
really cool to be able to have that understanding. I think that's why I like math so much. Wow, very nice. And how long ago was that? Though? Um, I took calculus the first year of calculus when I was a freshman. So mm -hmm. that was、uh, two years ago, I guess. Oh, okay. So that was the time that you realized that you like the math. Yeah, like I would.、Nice. I had been a couple of years ahead in math, like before that, but it was sort of just like I was doing it. I'm like, whatever. I guess I can take these classes. But that was when I was like, oh yeah, actually, I really like doing math, and I want to keep doing this. Nice, 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 nice. AP calculus actually changed my life as well. Long time ago, when I was in high school, yeah, that was the moment I realized I like math and I like teaching tutoring and all that. Is there any specific area of math that you like the most?、Um, I would say so. So far, I've learned the most about calculus and like similar fields, so like analysis in general, I guess.、Mm -hmm. So I do a lot of stuff with continuous functions and that kind of thing.、Mm -hmm. Linear algebra, I think, is sort of in that area. I'm not as good right now at discrete stuff, so I just took discrete math last semester. But things like、um, solving equations on the integers,、mm -hmm. I, I think it's called Diophantine equations,、yes. something like that. Yes. Yeah. So those kinds of equations, because I took the the AMC last year,、mm -hmm. and that like I got totally rocked. Like I barely qualified to the AMI when I did, I think the so the cutoff score. Last year for the Amy was 84,、uh -huh. and I got 85 and a half. Oh, okay, so, nice. Like, nice, nice. Just barely got it because I am just I'm just not good at doing things like oh solve this, but if you can only do it on the integer. So I'm like okay, I'm done. So、oh. those are those are things that I hope I can learn more about in the future, especially when I go to college. What resources, what web pages do you use to learn or study? Yeah, so most of my like I said before, most of my advanced calculus knowledge comes from YouTube videos. So a lot of math channels.、Um, most of the stuff that I use for math competitions is online. So channels like、um, Art of Problem Solving、mm -hmm. and Black Pen Red Pen, obviously, and all those kinds of channels. I learned a lot about that kind of calculus. So, for example, the only reason I know what Feynman integration even is, and the reason I can do it, is because I watched like ten videos on it.、Mm -hmm. And once you once you do it in like a high enough volume, then eventually your brain is just like, oh, I got it now. And it's really cool because I, I think the reason I like using YouTube videos to learn stuff is because it's kind of like easy on your brain. So it's something you, you know, like you get home from school and you're like eating eating your snack or whatever, and you're like watching a YouTube video. So you don't have to sit you like sit down in a textbook for hours. Be like, oh, I gotta do this problem <laughs> all the time. You like get really tired, but、mm -hmm. you can just watch people do the problems. And then as long as you're actually paying attention, you sort of start to understand it really well over time. And then once you actually try to do the problem, you're like, oh wait, I can do this now. Besides that, I don't really have a specific resource for math. I just use Google. Like I'll just look stuff up. I use、uh, Art of Problem Solving before as well. They have a lot of interesting questions, especially for math competitions. All right, and do you have any studying tips for the other students, especially for the other people who also like math and they want to do well in mathematics? We talked about we touched on this earlier when the person asked about how do you learn how do you remember calculus for a long time. But I think like the number one thing I can say about preparing is understanding concepts on like a deeper or intuitive level. So if it's the night before a test and you're just trying to cram, then just memorize all the formulas and forget it the next day.、Mm -hmm. But if you're trying to like build a base of knowledge so that the next year when you go into math and it's easier for you, it really serves you better to get a grasp of like why the formulas are the way they are. And I, I have two reasons for that. The first one is, like, the way your brain's memory works is making connections between ideas. So when you think about like proofs for things and why they are the way they are, then you make more connections to the ideas so you can remember them better that way.、Mm -hmm. And then also it lets you apply the ideas to like similar areas of math. So for example, if you know why you have to find du. When you're doing u substitution instead of just switching the variable,、mm. then when you go to vector calculus and learn about the Jacobian, then it actually makes sense because if you just learned, oh, this is just something I have to do when I integrate, and then someone shows, oh yeah, take the determinant of this matrix when you、mm -hmm. do substitute. Where, where did that come from?、Mm -hmm. But if you think about like, oh, du is talking about how much the area is scaled when I do like the reverse chain rule, then when they say, oh, this is the 2D version, it's like, oh, that makes sense. So then you can sort of understand that easier. Even if it's a new idea. Another example: if you've done more advanced math,、uh, like linear algebra,、mm -hmm. then if you know how matrices work in terms of like inputs and outputs with the rows and columns, then when you learn about Markov chains and adjacency matrices for graphs, you、yeah. know those are well. Those both make a lot more sense and they're easier to learn as well. 
know the fundamental so that it's easier to right. learn new things. When I was I was originally thinking about the question of、uh, what are your studying tips to others, my original answer was going to be don't ask me for study tips. <laughs> Because if you、um, if you look at like my notes, I, in my, I'm in my discrete math class right now. There's one day where I wrote down one thing the whole class. It's a two hour class. I wrote down one thing, which was factoring a quadratic polynomial, which has like nothing to do with the class. So I did, I take like no notes at all. So the way I study is I'll just go back and read the textbook and do the problems again. I see, I see, so, I see. I'm not, I'm not sure if you should take my advice for、um, how to take notes for math, but I don't, I don't take notes that well because I just try to focus on understanding the ideas, and、mm -hmm. then I think the notes are less necessary, especially if you have a textbook that you can just read anyway. Then I don't take notes that much personally. I see, I see. Yes. It's different for different people. So for you, if you would like to just pay attention to the lecture, without like trying to copy down whatever the teacher is writing down on the board, if that works for you, that works for you. So it's、mm. different for different people. That's great. Yeah, it works. Say, yeah, definitely. Don't just do what I do. Figure out what actually helps you to do well in the class. Yeah, I'm pretty sure some people are like, like are like that as well. That they just want to focus on the lecture because there's a textbook that they can go back and read. What are your favorite YouTube channels, both math and also not math? So my favorite math YouTube channels,、um, obviously Three Blue One Brown, he's best. Everyone's favorite. Yes. Anyway, I agree. That, I agree.、Um, I totally agree. I yeah. Actually,、uh, I actually have been、uh, really enjoying the the bijection videos that you've done on the Black Pen Red Pen channel. Oh, thank you, thank so, you, like, thank you. The, the open versus closed interval zero one and the real numbers.、Mm -hmm. Like the solution to that, when I figured that out, like. There is no way I was going to figure that out looking at the problem, but I thought that was a really cool solution.、Mm -hmm. um, other math channels are Think Twice,、mm -hmm. the geometry, the guy who does like geometric proofs, different things. He's really cool. Animation, right?、Um, yeah. The Art of Problem Solving YouTube channel, which is run by I think Richard Rusick. Yeah. So he was a USMO gold medalist a while ago, I think. Yeah. And he, his, the way he explains stuff, I think is really cool. I remember one of my favorite quotes from him is.、Um, If you can't do something smart, do something stupid. That helped me. <laughs> That's really nice.、Problems. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So there's there's one Amy problem. Okay. The first question on the Amy、uh -huh. the year I took last year was find the value of or like find the sum of the digits or something of nine plus ninety nine plus nine hundred ninety nine plus and then so on so on until you have like three hundred nines or something. Okay. And. So the the way you're supposed to do it is to realize oh nine is ten minus one a hundred is like ninety nine is a hundred minus one nine hundred ninety nine is a thousand minus one yeah、so、and you can just do that like one 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 whatever minus like three hundred uh huh the, the way I did it was I actually did like a fifth grade edition on it so I did like nine 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 plus nine 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 and I went down it took me like ten minutes I actually added up the whole thing. And I would I would like skip steps in between, but I actually added up the entire thing and I realized, dude, I started from the end and I got nine eight seven zero, and then it's one 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 one. I was like, oh, that looks like a pattern. And it goes all the way down. Wait, so the question so, is a nine plus ninety nine plus nine nine nine, and then up to so it's like a triangular pyramid like this. Yeah. So I just added up all the nines, but I got the right answer. <laughs> so. Wait, what、yeah. was the answer again? What was the correct、um, answer you said? It was the, so the question was either like what are the what's the sum of the digits or like what are the last four digits or something. Okay. So, but the the, the like the the actual sum it was like one 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 however many times and then zero seven eight nine at the end I think. Oh okay okay okay, so you are supposed to find out maybe like the last four digits. Yeah, I、nice. think so. <laughs> Yeah. So other math channels. I also like、uh, Let's Solve Math Problems.、Mm -hmm. His challenge videos are really cool, and they're way more advanced than I can do. So、mm. he's really good.、Mm -hmm. um, I also I'm also subscribed to a lot of music channels.、Mm -hmm. So outside of math,、uh, I think my favorite composer is C418 or C418. So a lot of he's most known because he made the Minecraft soundtrack. But I also like a lot of his other albums. So there's one called. Put in the chat. It's called Deef, I think.、Mm -hmm. Like D I E F. But a 
I think a lot of his music is really cool, so I'm subscribed to those sort of channels as well. Okay, very nice. So, mainly music and math. Mm -hmm. Okay, very nice, very nice. All right, so I see somebody else asked this question, but like, um, in general, what is your favorite math problem? Yeah. Um, so my favorite math concept is definitely the fundamental theorem of calculus. Yeah. But if we're if we're talking about like challenge problems, uh -huh. it is the the limit that I think is linked in the description, the one of one plus one over n squared times one plus two over n squared, and whatever. Oh, your crazy limits question. Yeah. So I actually have a sort of history with that problem. Um, when I was a sophomore, I went to a state calculus competition in Oregon, and I got second that year. And it wow. was a uh -huh. three-hour, ten-question exam. And uh -huh. that limit was the tenth question, and it was Ooh. the only question that I couldn't solve on the exam. Oh. Uh -huh. And someone else solved it. They told me the answer afterward, and I was like, because they told me the answer was square root of e, uh -huh. and I didn't know why it was. But I remember I wrote on my exam, like, I know it has something to do with E, but I can't figure out what it is. Uh -huh. Like, I just wrote that down on the problem. <laughs> that might have been, I think I actually got second by, like, one point. So I, that might have actually been why I got second. Oh, you get some partial credit because you wrote down, the answer has to be something with E? Yeah, because I knew it was nice. like, oh, it looks like 1 plus 1 over N to the N. I, could, I just couldn't figure out why. But uh, after the exam, I actually solved the problem. Like, a couple days later, I was working on it during my Spanish class. Oh. <laughs> I figured out the solution. Oh so my god! That was figuring out the solution. Uh -huh. Like that, the way the way to solve that is just like so weird. I was like, that is so cool that you could figure out how to solve it that way. I thought it was awesome. Yeah, I totally love that question. Especially now I know the story. I love the story behind the behind the math questions. Your favorite things that you like to do besides math? Mm -hmm. So besides math, I also play the piano pretty well so I've been playing for 12 years now so I started when I was five so I do piano and then I do debate like I said before so I'm the president of my school speech and debate team and I compete at debate tournaments hmm. and then I also work as a martial arts instructor so I wow. a martial arts instructor and then I train martial arts as well so I do all of that wait like yesterday you told me about that you were a martial arts instructor right but how did that work and then how did to become a martial art instructor. Mm -hmm. So uh, I got my one of my friends got me into martial arts when I was like seven or eight, I think. Wow. So that was about ten years ago, and I got my black belt a while. I think later when I was in middle school, like maybe eighth grade, I got my black belt after like five or six years, and then um, I was still training for a while. And there were, there were a few days here and there where the main instructor at the gym would be like, hey, can you help out and teach this class? Because like, I'm going to be sick or traveling mm -hmm. or whatever, so I would cover classes. And then eventually I started doing it regularly, so I get paid to teach classes about once a week usually. Wow. So, What kind of martial art do you do? So I do, the one I teach is a mix of Krav Maga, Muay Thai, and kickboxing for the most part. So those three sort of put together. And then I also train jujitsu, so I'm a blue belt in jujitsu. I'm not black belt in jujitsu. It's like insanely hard to get. So I'm a blue belt in jujitsu, and I also train that separately. Wow, that's so impressive. Yeah, jujitsu I think is really fun to do because it's <laughs> uh, if you know what it is, jujitsu is a lot about groundwork. So how you move around on the ground and deal with someone, like if you ever get knocked down, um, dealing with that sort of thing, and it's really cool to learn like how your body moves and that mm -hmm. sort of thing and apply it when you're rolling with someone else is really fun you know i'm not looking at the chart right now right but i can guess that someone's going to ask you to see if you can do some videos on martial arts for us <laughs> later on <laughs> i don't know if i'm quite important enough to make like a second channel where i'm like oh yeah here's like here's me playing piano here's like me doing jiu-jitsu whatever but I'll, I'll consider it we'll see maybe what are the things that you want other people to know about you with, so for my channel, uh, I want my channel to be known for like creating new understanding for mathematical ideas. So in my videos, I try as much as possible to like avoid pulling things out of thin air when I explain ideas. Mm -hmm. So I always want to make sure, I want people to finish an explanation with an idea of like, oh yeah, of course that's the answer, like what else would it be? So it just sort of makes sense. And then when you have that sort of understanding, it really helps you when you continue on to more math. Um, other things I want people to know about me. Mm -hmm. um, 
I don't know. I think the like the stuff we just talked about with like debate and that kind of things. I think are sort of the most important things that I do besides that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna be applying to college soon, so if I, if I ever like my uploading ever slows down, then that's why because I'm trying to get all these applications in. Yeah, I'm gonna apply like five different schools early action, so it's gonna start up soon. Uh, best of luck like, to you. So. Yeah, yeah, it'll be interesting to do that. Which school do you want to go to the most? So I've been touring a lot of schools, and honestly, um, I don't <laughs> I don't know if I know very much about any of them. Like, I so I, like I said before, I went and toured MIT uh, on Monday, and I toured Princeton on Tuesday. Wow! And they give a lot of information stuff. I've also been to um, Caltech, uh, Carnegie Mellon, and Harvey Mudd, and a couple other schools like that. Mm -hmm. I think there, so. There are a lot of ones that I'm looking at, and I'm I'm gonna apply to all of them because mm -hmm. I talked to someone uh, a couple days ago, I think like a week ago, who went to Rice University, mm -hmm. and she said originally she applied to Rice like last minute as sort of like, oh, I mean, I guess I'll apply here, sort of on a whim, but then. When she finally went to make the decision, she realized that rice was really the, the thing that made the most sense for her. Mm -hmm. So I sort of want to keep my options open with colleges and then be able to look at them later. Because definitely, I have no idea where I want to go right now. Like, I'm definitely looking at places like MIT and Caltech, but it's possible that I'll completely change my mind in a month. So okay. I have to keep doing more research on that.